This is a brochure for the Leyland Princess from June 1978. It's a car that was very advanced for its time, and the styling reflected that with the wedge shape that characterises the 1970s. It was launched in 1975 at the worst possible time for British Leyland. It was the same year that the company was nationalised following its bankruptcy, and the Princess was the first model to feel its effect. It was launched in March as the Austin and Morris 1800 and 2200, and as the plush Wolseley Saloon. But after BL started being rationalised, the range was simplified and became the Princess in September 1975. No Austin or Morris badges, just Princess. This brochure is for the Princess 2, the revised car that was launched in 1978 and lasted until the Princess was replaced by the Austin Ambassador in 1982. This is a very strange cover for a brochure. No glamorous shots or anything that might draw your eye, just bold text and some rather grim images. We're not off to a good start. I think it's very clear what demons BL were fighting here. It's all in the build quality. And those demons become ever clearer inside. When the Princess was launched some two and a half years ago, it was instantly and universally acclaimed as a potential world beater. Not only by the motoring public, but by the hard-bitten and hypocritical motoring press, who put it through every conceivable test before pronouncing their enthusiastic verdict. Since then, Princess sales have reached nearly 100,000 in 42 different countries and four continents around the world. For good reasons. No other car, British or foreign, offers such an inspired combination of advanced styling, space, comfort, safety and all-round motoring economy as the Princess. With its distinctive exterior, luxuriously appointed interior, smooth, quiet performance and precise responses, the Princess can truly be called a civilised car, designed and built for civilised motoring. So why change it? Why the Princess 2? Quite simply because the Princess is a product of our fast-moving technological age, and no car, however popular or well-conceived, can afford to live on past or even present glories. New ideas, new techniques, new processes are announced almost daily, and whilst many of these have already been incorporated into the Princess as routine improvements, others entail fairly radical design changes. So, some time ago we embarked on a complete reappraisal of the successful Princess, with the object of producing an even better, even more civilised motor car whilst retaining its essential qualities. Every component in its manufacturer was scrutinised and every opportunity for improvement was seized. Thinking was comprehensive, ranging from redesigned window winders to a completely new four-cylinder engine. Having built the new car, we tested it. Bench tests, endurance tests, high-speed tests in the heat of southern Italy, in the cold of northern Ontario, on German autobahns and along Kenyan cattle tracks. For a very civilised car, the new Princess 2 has proved itself in some very uncivilised tests. Yeah, they're trying to make people think it will be different this time. The Princess was a good car and it was highly rated, but as ever, British Leyland happened. The car needed the refresh and it needed an advertising campaign that went all in on changing people's preconceptions of how a Leyland car performed. So here is the Princess 2 range. Slightly revised over the original Princess, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. I think it looks great. It's so 1970s, but for its time, it was ever so radical, ever so avant-garde. Designed by Harris Mann, who also designed the even wedgier Triumph TR7, launched in the same year. Apart from this window line that dips down from the scuttle, it is fab. The front end especially, and the six-cylinder cars with the trapezoid headlamps, are the best of the range. The flared arches, too. It manages to look so edgy without being over-designed. So here we go, we're about to look through how BL intertwined their theme of rigorous testing and improved quality with the standard marketing rubbish you usually find in a brochure. The original concept of Princess gave us a strong base. The Daily Mail called it the most exciting piece of British styling since the war. But those subtly rakish lines are not just for the sake of appearances. They're aerodynamically sensible, reducing both wind noise and petrol consuming drag. The interior too offers little opportunity for radical improvement. As thousands of owners will testify, it already offers relaxed comfort for all the family. 
The ergonomically designed driver's seat adjusts for height, reach and rake, giving 240 positions to put absolutely everyone at their ease. The ride-on independent hydrogas suspension is unique. Front-wheel drive makes for impeccable road manners, and the car's uncanny serenity at cruising speeds takes the strain out of modern motoring. However civilised the design of a motor car may be, it loses its appeal if it doesn't live up to its premise. Princess 2 promises a great deal, so we've tested it in barbaric conditions throughout the world to ensure that it's tough enough to take the pace of the high street. In four years, we covered over one and a half million miles of development testing to push Princess 2 to its limits. We crossed three continents, seeking out the hottest, the coldest, fastest and the toughest conditions to prove our new car. Then we put the results into practice in Britain's congested cities, motorways and country roads. Only when our engineers were convinced that the car could keep its promise in the ultimate test in your hands did they release Princess 2 for production. Probably the biggest change that came to the Princess 2 was the engines. The original car used a 1.8 litre B-series 4-cylinder and 2.2 litre 6-cylinder E-series. The 6-pop still looked relatively modern, but the B-series 4-banger was looking like an antique. It had been around since the 1950s, and though it had been a good servant, it just wasn't up to taking on more modern engines. BL therefore completely redesigned the unit, coming up with the O-series, complete with a belt-driven overhead cam. It still had the gearbox in the sump, as did the E-Series. That's kind of how they managed to squeeze a Transverse 6 into a front-wheel drive car. Anyway, 1.7 and 2.0-litre O-Series 4-cylinder engines and the old 2.2-litre E-Series straight 6. The extra 2.0-litre variant was very important in creating a Princess that directly competed with the 2.0-litre Ford Cortina. Our new engine went over 1 million miles without moving. The new Princess 2 four-cylinder engine was literally put on the rack by our development engineers and subjected to a lengthy series of 30 tests to prove the efficiency and reliability of every component. The greatest contrast to the smoothness of our civilised new engines is the harshness of the tests we used to prove them. Before the new O-series engine even got into a Princess, it covered the equivalent of over 1.2 million miles of arduous bench tests. Static bench tests may sound easy, but that couldn't be further from the truth. For hours, the O-Series was revved and over-revved. Operating in these extreme conditions, we can develop components which are equal to the tests they will meet with the everyday motorist. Take, for example, our thermal shock test, designed to prove the gasket seal. First, we run the engine up to maximum power until it's glowing under the strain, and then we drain the water. Next, we refill with chilly coolant, giving an 80 degree fluctuation over a period of three minutes. Then we repeat the process 100 times just to make things tough. And not until the engine has passed three of these 50 hour marathons is it deemed fit to go on to the next. Not only the engine itself is tested, further individual tortures are imposed on the oil pressure valve, thermostat distributor, oil filter, starter motor, air cleaner, valve springs and other components. After a million miles on the bench, our development team releases the engines for a further million miles test on the road in a Princess 2. Princess 2 design, a study in detail. Take a look at Princess's design and you'll see how we care about the details. Details that our competitors sometimes miss, like the factory fitted underbody protection, wax injected body members, corrosion proof wheel arch liners, recessed windscreen wipers or side window demisters. Princess 2 has taken this concern still further and the careful eye will detect dozens of small improvements which will reflect the evolution and refinement of those small things in life that help make the car even more comfortable, convenient or tough. Take the windscreen wipers for example. We've changed the design of the wiper blade to eliminate lift and judder under extreme conditions whilst you'll find the side windows roll up and down with just a little less effort. Or look at the door seals, better fitting. The instruments, clearer and more informative. The body seals, coated in corrosion resistant paint. You'll even find the glove box lid folds down to form a tray with a recess for cups. Small things mean a lot, and we've tightened many of our tolerances for Princess 2, be it wheels and tyres, body assembly or transmissions, Austin Morris now extracts some of the closest design standards in the country.
Now, I love these design drawings. I'm sure they exist somewhere, and I'm not sure whether you can see them on camera, but someone will have them, the real ones, stored away somewhere. But these are exactly the kind of things that a mahoosive nerd like myself would love to have framed. I might need to think about that. The new Princess 2 is a haven of peace and quiet. Aerodynamically, the new Princess 2 is extremely efficient. It's recessed windscreen wipers and clean, uncluttered lines, preventing wind roar at cruising speeds. Add to this a quiet, unflurried engine and the smooth, jostle-free ride afforded by hydrogas suspension, now modified for even greater efficiency, and you have the basic essentials for a civilised motor car. Within this smooth, silent and spacious interior, we've designed decor fit for a civilised man. There's our first bit of casual sexism from the 1970s in this brochure. The seating is frankly luxurious, deep sprung yet firm in all the right places. The driver's seat, passengers too in the HLS, adjust to no less than 240 positions, tailoring the car to your body and even your driving mood. The quietness of our six and new four-cylinder engines has already been mentioned. This quality is further enhanced by efficient insulation, keeping things peaceful inside even when you're driving the engine hard. Around you are the tasteful trappings of civilised motoring, thick moulded carpeting throughout, stylish yet functional fascias, recessed instrumentation, high quality door furniture, deeply contoured panels with padded armrest, a luxurious living room for up to five people. To complete your relaxation we fitted a superb heating and ventilation system that's infinitely flexible yet refreshingly easy to understand. There's even a control to recirculate the air inside the car, a boom when you're stuck behind a badly maintained diesel truck in a traffic queue. BL's efforts to make you believe they've got their act together kind of stalls a little when they claim about doing 24,000 miles in a fortnight, around a circle, at motorway speeds. That puts very little wear on the components compared to real driving, changing gear, stopping, starting and potholes, so not the best test, but still I suppose it gives them a nice little tagline. Here is a list of all the little touches BL wanted you to know about on the Princess 2. While I'm not convinced on the interior design as such, I think it's a little cheap, it was more than a match for contemporary Cortinas. It might be telling though, that we haven't yet seen a head-on shot of the dashboard. Safety was something that BL had previously discarded thanks to Alec Izagonis' stubbornness, but as the 70s rolled around, the issue was being taken a lot more seriously. By far, the most important safety feature of the Princess 2 is its sheer drivability. The car is nimble, sure-footed and instantly responsive to your commands, its front-wheel drive design helping you to steer clear of danger, even in treacherous road or weather conditions. But this hasn't prevented us from carrying out extensive impact research tests on the new Princess 2, nor from building in a host of extra safety features. Carefully designed crumple zones at the front and rear of the car dramatically lessen the effect of sudden impact on the car's occupants. The steering column is fully collapsible, and in the event of a severe frontal collision, the engine will slide under rather than through the engine compartment bulkhead. Improved de novo wheels and tyres are an option on all Princess 2 models. These fail-safe tyres prevent sudden loss of steering in the event of a puncture and allow you to drive home or to the nearest service point in perfect safety and control. A Triplex 1020 windscreen is a major new safety feature standard on every Princess 2. This windscreen was also on the Rover SD1 from its launch in 1976 and this picture here demonstrating its safety is a bit creepy. Creepier than I expect some cloth heads with slashes in them to be. Well, it's taken 15 pages, but we are finally getting into the range itself, starting with the 1700L, which gets a decent level equipment for 1978 standards, a clock, cigar lighter, vanity mirror, twin radio speakers, and lots of black vinyl. It's a big step up, though, to the 1700HL, with its coach line down the side, vinyl pillars, leather steering wheel, wood dashboard, fabric seats, then the vital rear armrest and cigarette lighter, for all the junior government ministers that were for a time driven around in princesses. 
The 2000 and 2200 HL are much the same, but with the bigger 2 litre O series engine or the 2.2 litre E series straight six. And for me, the all important trapezoid headlamps the car was always designed to have. The silence of this compact six is the perfect foil for the supple hydrogas suspension and Princess's distinctive wind cheating shape, making it a relaxing car to drive over long distances. Despite being capable of 105 miles per hour, the E-Series 6 cylinder can return over 27 miles per hour at the motorway maximum, or 34 mpg at a steady 56 miles per hour. The effortless limousine feel is reinforced by sensitive power assisted steering, which is a standard feature on all 6 cylinder princesses, whilst automatic transmission, an option which is offered on all models, is available at extra cost. Finally, we come to the 2200 HLS, the top of the range princess. Same straight six and trapezoid headlamps, but a full vinyl roof, a necessity in my book to complete the 70s-ness of the princess. It's one of the few cars that I think really looks wrong without the vinyl. It also comes with different wheel trims, tinted glass and a velour interior. Lovely. In this spec, in this shade of blue, it looks fab. Definitely avant-garde, Definitely different to anything else on the roads, but ever so cool. I love the gently sweeping bonnet line at the front, the definition of shape around the headlamps, the squared off but flared wheel arches, the gold coach line, the vinyl roof, the wheel trims, and the flat glass and boot lid, then the sheer angle here at the back. It is brilliant, and I think it's Harris Mann's best work. I just want to mention the way that these pages are laid out. The pictures are just too small and there's lots of blank space. Whoever designed this brochure has done a dreadful job. There's nothing in here that makes me want a princess in any way. Anybody that was possibly thinking about a princess would have picked up this brochure and probably been a bit disappointed. But the other side of the page and we have a summary of everything that we've just seen across the model range. Starting to sum up now, here are the specifications. If I could just wrestle with it here. Here are the specifications. Just pause the video if you want to read any of them. On the back, an advert for Supercover and the ever-present and rather disappointing fuel economy figures. Again, this is not an Austin princess. It is a princess from Austin Morris. So, Princess 2. It starts off badly. Nobody's ever going to be enticed by this cover, but as we work our through, it does get a bit better. This is just the world that British Leyland was living in. Things were dire, they had to talk about changes in quality. But all that's realistically doing is highlighting issue to the customers. It's not really going to make them believe that anything has changed, just that Barry down the pub has one, and it breaks all the time. They should be talking about how advanced the princess is, the hydrogas suspension, the avant-garde styling, and they do touch on that, but they don't focus on it. As a lot of motoring magazines said, the princess was a very, very good car, completely ruined by reliability. Anyway, that is the Princess 2 brochure. If you enjoyed the video, then please do click like and subscribe to Twincam as well. It really, really makes a difference, and I'll have more videos coming along very soon.